Hey guys, Jeff here. And today I want to make a video for Sam and David. Um, I met them over the summer and had promised to talk about how to make fire with flint and steel and realized it was about time. So when I met them, you guys already had flint and steel. Now we did talk about a little bit, and this is for the rest of you as well, probably new. When you are talking about flint and steel, you are talking about hitting a piece of metal against a rock to get some sparks. Now, when you're doing that, your rock, most people focus on it needing to be flint or chert, but really you just need a hard, sharp rock. I've done this with quartz or anything else like that before. If you can break it and get a sharp edge, the more important part is your edge. You want your edge to be sharp. And when I say sharp, I don't just mean like you might cut yourself. 90 degrees is not sharp. You want the edges where they meet to be narrower than 90 degrees. Because if it's narrower than 90 degrees, that's gonna help it be sharp. So that way it can peel the sparks, which are little pieces of metal coming off of this. However, that is not the only thing you need for making fire with flint and steel. Now, one of the most important things you need is called char cloth. Char cloth is when we take some natural material, typically something like cotton, most of mine, you might be able to see it there, is made from blue jeans. If you put it in something like this Altoids tin, close it up and put it in a fire, what's gonna happen is the material is gonna undergo a chemical change by which all that you're left with, and you can see that this one's not completely done, it's still pretty light colored there. But if you do it right, what you're left with is basically pure carbon. If you do it right, it's gonna be kind of delicate and it's got that pure black color to it. The other thing that you need if you want to make an actual fire is you need a tinder bundle. Now for me, most of the time when I make one, it looks something like this. I am simply using some jute twine and unraveling it because it comes in these three strands. If you unravel it, each of these strands can be broken down further. Now when you break those down, you end up with this big fluffy pile. So the reason we're doing this is the char cloth can catch a spark and make a hot area, but it can't make a fire by itself. So once we get a spark into the char cloth, we're gonna put it into our tinder bundle here, our little nest, and blow on it to actually get fire. So let's see if I can talk you through the process and do this. So the char cloth, usually we're gonna hold it on top of our flint, on top of our stone, so that way when we're striking the sparks, the edge of the char cloth is close to the sparks, so that way, hopefully, a spark will land here and catch and expand. I have one and it went out. Sometimes turning over can give me a better edge. Make sure I'm still in camera there. And notice that I'm striking with a glancing blow to peel that off. Now, can you see that? You see how that is already lit? The wind is kind of blowing that for me. So because of the fact that this is just that piece of carbon, it's going to expand and it's gonna get really hot. If I'm not careful, I'll get my fingers as well. So we just wanna put this inside of our little nest and the heat from that char cloth is gonna hopefully make this nest catch on fire. So if I just give it a little bit of a breath, I can find that it's about to catch, because you can see that smoke start getting thicker. And there we go. That is how we can use flint and steel to make fire. Now this, you would want to have some twigs or other small pieces of wood ready, so you can put this underneath 
and get the little sticks to catch from this and then catch the bigger sticks. But all of that is an entirely different exercise. This is all you need to do to make the fire itself. You can practice with just making the sparks. I highly recommend taking the char cloth and at least practice trying to catch the char cloth. If it catches, you can kind of smush it out sometimes if you're really careful. But you don't always need to blow it to flame, but you should practice making some tinder bundles. And if you're a child with your parents present and helping, try putting the char cloth in and blowing it to flame. Hope that helps you guys out. I wish you all the best of luck in your fire making experiment.